The Apple Magic Keyboard with Touch ID is the standard Mac keyboard. In this video, we're gonna cover all the different features of the keyboard and we'll talk about if you should buy this or if there might actually be a couple other better keyboard options for you depending on the different devices you have and the way you wanna use this keyboard. The Magic Keyboard uses Bluetooth and has a built-in rechargeable battery that's recharged using Lightning. And this keyboard works with all the different Macs and with iPads as well. And I find that it's really comfortable to type on. It just feels like you're using any of the standard Apple computer keyboards like the newer MacBook Pros. The keyboard layout and all the different shortcuts and buttons perfectly match the newer Apple laptops. So it's a really seamless experience if you're going from using a laptop to using this on a desktop. You just know where all the buttons are and what they do. The typing experience is also pretty much identical to using the laptops. The keys have minimal travel and they don't stick at all, so it's a very fast, quiet typing experience. The Magic Keyboard with Touch ID includes a braided USB-C to lightning cable to charge and to pair it. To pair it to a Mac, it's really easy. You just plug the USB cable into your computer and then plug the lightning into the keyboard and it's paired. Where it gets annoying though is if you wanna wirelessly pair this keyboard to an iPad, you shut the keyboard off, then on, then it should be discoverable in the Bluetooth settings of your iPad. But if you wanna go back to using it on the computer, then you need to pull out your USB-C to lightning cable again. And then once you repair it to your computer, you actually have to forget the keyboard on the iPad. So that makes it really frustrating if you wanna use this with an iPad and a MacBook. I find myself really enjoying the way that a lot of the Logitech keyboards get around this by having dedicated device pairing buttons and they store a memory of up to three devices at once. So it makes it a lot faster and easier to just change what computer or iPad your keyboard is paired to without having to pull out a whole cable. It would have been really neat if Apple pulled in AirPods and if they somehow were able to put an H1 or a U1 chip in these, that way the keyboard knew what device you were trying to type on and switch seamlessly from one device to the next, kind of like how AirPods just follow whatever device you're listening on currently. I will say the keyboard functions really well if you're using continuity on a Mac and iPad. Then you can slide across from one screen to the next and click with your mouse, and then you're able to type on this keyboard on your iPad but you're not always using continuity when you wanna use this with an iPad. If you have one of the older Magic Keyboards, Apple has changed what several of the buttons on this do, including the Touch ID button in the top right. And the Touch ID will only work if you're using it with an Apple Silicon Mac that has an M1, M2, or any other version of those chips on it. Some other notable button changes is there's a dictation button on F5. There's also the Do Not Disturb button on F6. If you click the function button in the bottom left, it allows you to bring up the emoji keyboard as well. Overall, the Magic Keyboard is a fantastic experience to use if you're already an Apple user because all the buttons are just spaced perfectly and it just feels seamless if you're going from laptop use to desktop use. This is also a great option if you have a Mac Mini or if you have a Mac Studio and you're building out your setup with different wireless peripherals. The Magic Keyboard with Touch ID is only available in white and silver. If you wanna get the space gray version, you have to get the version of it that has the number pad and the price also goes up quite a bit. So I really wish that Apple would have offered this in space gray black as well, because that would go really good with dark mode setups. If you don't want the Touch ID button, you can also get this newer version of the keyboard for $100. So it essentially costs $50 to get the Touch ID button. So when you're deciding whether or not to purchase this keyboard, first and foremost, you need to ask, do I really want Touch ID or not? Now, Touch ID on Mac is really useful because you can use it to unlock your computer, to access saved passwords, iCloud keychain, to pay for things through Apple Pay, or to make purchases through the App Store. So there's a lot of great functionality built in that saves you time of entering your password manually. So first and foremost, I would only buy this version of the keyboard if you really want to use those Touch ID features. Otherwise, I would go for the slightly cheaper Magic Keyboard that doesn't have Touch ID because the layout is still gonna match your MacBook Pro perfectly. Secondly, I would ask yourself if you're using this with a lot of different devices and you wanna quickly change between different Macs or using it with an iPad. If you wanna change devices, you should probably look into buying the Logitech MX Keys Mini or the MX Keys Mechanical Mini, or either of the four Mac versions of these keyboards. I have separate video reviews of all these keyboards and I'm gonna be making some comparison videos as well. So be sure to check those out. But basically the Logitech keyboards have most of the same features, but some of the function buttons don't perfectly match the Apple buttons. 
Like you don't get a screen brightness up and down button on the Logitech keyboards because those buttons are reserved for the device pairing buttons. Also, if you're using a Windows computer on the side too, these Logitech keyboards are a much better option because they support Windows layout. If you get the MX Mechanical Mini, it costs $150, which is the same as this Touch ID keyboard. Or you can also get the Logitech MX Keys Mini, which features the scissor style switches like this keyboard. And it only costs $100, so that's a great option if you don't want the Touch ID but you do want the multi-device switching functionality on a keyboard. What I would really like to see Apple do is add better multi-device functionality into the Magic Keyboard and also to change it from Lightning to USB-C because that's what all their computers charge with and what the iPads charge with and probably the iPhone 15 is gonna use USB-C as well. If Apple could add these features, I think the Magic Keyboard would pretty much be unbeatable for Apple users because the Touch ID button is so cool and useful and it's gonna save you a lot of time of typing in your password and makes logging in and using iCloud Keychain a breeze. So at the end of the day, this is a great, easy to use keyboard that works great with Apple products. Unlike the Magic Mouse, you can use it while it's plugged in so you don't have to worry about your battery life, although the battery does last for a really long time. So to wrap it all up, this is a great keyboard, super easy to type on, and it feels just like using your MacBook keyboard. I have no complaints with it, except it is kind of expensive for what you get and the multi-device functionality is just pretty difficult to use on this keyboard. It's not very user intuitive. But if you're using this with one computer mainly, it's gonna be a fantastic keyboard for you. I have links to check out the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID in the description below. And if you have any other questions about this keyboard, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. Also like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out all my other keyboard, mouse, and tech video reviews.